I want to talk briefly about the input labeling. Um, when we created this audio track, uh, if you'll recall, um, let's create another one, shall we? I didn't uh, ask you to uh, actually monitor, uh, change the input here. And the reason for that is that it has uh, a strange set of labels. So again, I'm going to hit create on that and I'm going to change it from here. I'm going to change to a stereo input by clicking here. And then I'm going to look at the list of inputs that I have. And because we are using the montage itself as our audio interface, we have 16 pairs of stereo channels. They are inputs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. But very confusingly, Yamaha have decided to name those using their driver as main left and right for input 1 and 2, which is fine, of course. But then for input 3 and 4, they call that USB 1 and 2 which means that when you get to the final pair, 31 and 32, you're dealing with USB 29 and 30, which makes absolutely no sense to me at all. It uh, seems to be designed to confuse, but um, it is what it is. And uh, thankfully, Logic gives us a way to work around that that I'm going to show you in a moment. So let's set that to the stereo input and uh, just check what we've got. Now in my setup here, I have my audio interface, which is my audio fuse. I have a montage and I've also got a Roland Phantom, all of which act as USB interfaces. And quite often I'll have projects where I'm using a microphone input into the audio fuse um, and some tones out of the montage and also some from the Phantom. But if you take a look at the audio settings for Logic Pro, it will allow us to only have a single output and a single input device. I cannot choose multiple. So you might think that uh, all is lost and you can only have one particular interface in your project. But in actual fact, Apple gives us a way around this. Um, so let's head back to Audio MIDI setup and we're going to create a thing called an aggregate device. I'll hit the plus down here. And uh, what I need to do is pick out, first of all, the device that actually has my monitors attached to it, my speakers. And that is my audio fuse. So I'll bring that in first. And you can see the inputs and outputs for my audio fuse listed here. Next, I'm going to add the montage to this device. And now we have all of the uh, many, many inputs and outputs for the montage added to that. But I'm also going to add my phantom. Now we have these three devices all together in this one giant device that has 72 ins and 20 outs. Now I should just warn you that if one of your synthesizers decides to reboot itself or your computer goes to sleep, then there's a good chance that when everything comes back online again, one of these devices will be identifying itself differently and your aggregate device will be effectively broken. In the event that that happens, don't worry, you just essentially have to rebuild the device. And to do that, you would just need to uncheck the devices that are showing as uh, missing, and then just rebuild the device in exactly the same way. Don't destroy the device, just get rid of all of the components, and then bring back the same components that you had in the first place in the same order. You must use the same order, otherwise things will start to go very wrong because Logic is going to uh, remember the inputs based on their numbers, not based on the device that they came from. Now you may have noticed Logic flashing away behind there as we created this device, and the reason for that is that it has detected the new device and it wants to know if we would like to use it, uh, which we would. So let's say use to both of those. And as soon as I've done so, I can suddenly hear my voice in my ears. And the reason for that is, like I said, Logic uses the input number rather than any sort of intelligence as to which interface it came from to identify its inputs. And whereas input one previously belonged to the montage, input one on this aggregate device belongs to the microphone input on my audio fuse. So I need to go in here and change that. I'll click on that and go to input. And you can see that now I've got the audio fuse inputs, uh, the, uh, the treated as stereo pairs at the moment, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we've got the montage, uh, all 16 channels of those with its very confusing naming. 
Now, having said that Yamaha has done a bad job here, they've done a significantly better job than Roland have, where there are no identifying names at all provided by the Phantom driver, uh, so that's just a complete guess as to what those inputs mean. But we can fix that um, and also put right this main versus one and two. Uh, so let's quickly switch over to main left and right so that I can't hear my voice anymore and we're monitoring the montage instead. Thank goodness. And now I'm going to go into mix and IO labels and you'll see a list of every single input. Firstly, the mono versions of your entire interface, then the mono versions of each output, and then the stereo versions of the inputs and outputs, as you can see. And I have painstakingly typed in the names of each of these parts where the driver hasn't provided something useful. So uh, I've got montage main left for USB main left and going right down to uh, the phantom main left and right. Um, but I very rarely use the uh, mono versions of any of these channels. So uh, what we're actually more interested in is the stereo versions. So uh, here we go. There's labels for all of those. Uh, so I'm going to select all of those names that I've typed in and just tell it to use those names. Let's make sure I've got those all because this is something that always messes up. I have, and now if I go back into my input selection, I should have some sensible naming. So I have montage parts one to 16, phantom zones one to 16, and the uh, appropriate names for the audio fuse bits and pieces.